you may say, I have no willpower. That's self-control. And that's not a permanent deficiency. That is something that can be worked on and achieved. Today, we're talking about sweat as a love offering. So this is a little different way to think about working out. So in Christianity, you have tithes and offerings, that sort of thing. This is different than a tithe. This is an offering. It's something over and above and extra that you want to offer as a sacrifice. Your sweat, your work can be that offering. It can be that sacrifice. I don't go to a church building anymore, not after the debacle of 2020 and the way they treated everyone. It was just asking everybody for money instead of saying, hey, you've been pouring into us for decades. Why don't we pour into you since, you know, you're struggling and don't know if you're going to keep your job and all of that. You know, that would have been nice, but still a little salty about it. Moved on, forgiven, but I'm done with the building. I do want to give an offering though. Like I still want to continue to give. I want to give to God. So this is one of the ways that I have found since then to give non-monetarily. I want to present a sacrifice to him just out of love and devotion. So what can I offer? You know, self-control is one of the fruits of the spirit. I think it was my least productive branch and I've been working on it steadily for several years. I'm only just now feeling like I've finally got a handle on it and am self-controlled. I think offering your self-control in your nutrition is a really great place to start. A lot of people try to jump into both nutrition and exercise at the same time and they end up burning out and that's, that's not what you want to do. You want to succeed. So I started with just nutrition and then I moved on to working out and offering that as my offering. When I was on the treadmill, I would be thinking, I used to be crippled. I used to not be able to walk and now I can walk and I'm going to walk and all of this work and dedication and devotion and discipline is dedicated to you, God. You know, that's what I did when I was on the Stairmaster, just, you know, slogging away. I'd say, hey, I couldn't climb stairs a few months ago. Now I can, and now I can steadily for 30 minutes. So thank you, Lord. I offer this. I offer this movement as a sacrifice. It's an offering of praise and thanks and work. I can lift heavy things. That is amazing because when I was sick, when I had the autoimmune flare-ups, I couldn't hardly wash dishes like my hands. They didn't work. I couldn't hold things, you know, like you hold a cup and you have to, but I would not be able to hold it and kind of, you know, do like that because I couldn't, I couldn't grip. I had no, no grip strength. Now I do. So I offer that as an offering. When I would go into the sauna after my workout, I would sit there just dripping and dripping sweat and thank God for the ability to get out there and to do something with my body that isn't just laying in bed like I'm on 600 pound life. And I would offer all of my dedication and discipline to him as an offering. I also used it as my prayer time. And you know, the Bible says that ever since Jesus raised from the dead, there's no need of a temple. So the building is irrelevant. We are the temple of Christ. And don't you want him to inhabit the very best temple that he can? You know, I mean, you can't do anything about where you are now, but you can start working on yourself for the future. So I am trying to be the most beautiful, most ornate, most disciplined temple that he has been in. Is it possible? I don't know. It doesn't really matter, even if I don't achieve it. The goal is to try, and I'm trying, so that's all I can do. Solomon's temple was unbelievably beautiful. It was paneled with cedar and with chiseled stones and pomegranates, and it was just absolutely beautiful, gilded with gold, lovely. So, you know, I want to give the Holy Spirit a good place to rest, a good place to reside and to do his work in me. So that's just something that I have come up with that has really helped me. Like when I want to give up or I really don't feel like it, I say, okay, no, this is not just for me. This is for the Lord. And so I offer it up as a sweat offering. So I work my butt off. In everything I do, I work. I work to homeschool my children. I work to take care of my home. I work to keep everyone fed. I cook two dinners so that I can eat and my family can eat because they don't eat the same things that I eat. I wish they did, but they don't. 
I really wish they did. It would make dinner so much easier. But there are reasons. And you may say, I have no willpower. That's self-control. And that's not a permanent deficiency. That is something that can be worked on and achieved. Now, it does take work. But we're talking about sweat as a love offering, right? So your work is valuable. It's not necessarily the result. You know, I'm not offering up a perfect body as a love offering. That, that's not what it is. It's the work. It's the sweat. It's the discipline. It's the daily grind. That is my love offering. And you can pray for self-control. There are other fruits of the Spirit I do not recommend praying for, like patience. If you pray for patience, hold on because your life is about to get real, real rough. Because the only way you can develop patience is through trials. Do it at your own risk. You know, it might be worth it when you're ready to have your life thrown up in the air and lose everything. Ask me how I know. But you can pray for self-control with minimal risk as long as you're willing to do the work. So you have to be able to analyze yourself and say, am I really doing my best? Or am I giving in to weakness? Is this a temptation? Does this have dominion over me? If it has dominion over you, it's a sin. It's not something that you need to keep around. And it is possible to overcome temptation, even if you're not a Christian. Like, I know that not everyone is a Christian, and when I start talking like this, I, I lose a few of you. But this applies to anyone, regardless of what you believe. It's for you, you know? This exercise, this discipline, this development of a sacrificial point of view, that's for you. God doesn't need our sweat. He doesn't, he doesn't need my sweat and he doesn't need a fancy temple. But I want to give it to him. So I'm going to do it. So last week I shared about the low-carb cruise and sort of my plan for all of that. Next week we'll discuss how to take every thought captive. You know, sometimes just in your daily life everything's going great and then suddenly this thought pops up and it totally derails you. So... I had one of those moments, and I wrote it down, and now I'm going to film about it, and I hope it doesn't make me depressed again, but it might. But if you missed the episode of The Low Carb Cruise, you can watch it here. Till next time, stay beautiful, friends.